Hey guys, Joe with ECRM here at our on and off premise adult beverage session in Florida. And I have with me James Sherman from Nielsen IQ. And both of us moderated some of our round tables that we hosted yesterday. So we're gonna give a recap, kind of a recap of both of our round tables. So the one James moderated was on zero and low ABV uh, beverage, uh, adult beverages. So we're gonna start with that. And, it's, and mine was about overall trends, which included that. So, you know, uh, I'll let you know what was talked about at my table too. So what did you hear from the, the brands and buyers that were at your round tables? So the, the question I was asking to them, and I thought it was very general, which I thought would get a lot of good responses was, um, what did they see if, in the future as far as non-ALK? Mm -hmm. They see more growth. It's obviously it's blowing up right now. It's, um, it's over $510 million, up about 31%. So mm -hmm. um, they, do they see that tapering off? Do they see that continuing to grow? And the overall consensus was absolutely it's going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to one gentleman who was just in Scandinavia, and he was telling me that almost everybody in the bar that he was drinking and drinking with was drinking non-alcoholic beer. Mm. Um, and he also talked about the, uh, the, the sales tax that they have on beer and how the higher the alcohol is, the higher it's taxed, and which I thought was a very mm. interesting way of, of them doing it. Um, so it's a money saving thing. It's a money saving <laughs> thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's interesting. The, um, on my table, we, we talked a lot about that in the trends and obviously it's, it's, not just people on a wagon that are doing that, it's people doing it for health reasons. A yeah. lot more people are learning more about how uh, alcohol can, you know, make the next day, you know, it's not gonna hurt them necessarily, yeah. but it, it, they may not be 100%. Right. You know, so I see a trend, I'm seeing in New York, I'm seeing a lot more bars and restaurants have non-alcoholic beverages on as an their option. menus as an option. So, but wine seems to be a tricky part. Like. They haven't cracked that code yet. And I had yep. a whole conversation with somebody on video too. about that. Yep. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Wine is very difficult to produce. Um, it loses all of the, um, the the great aspects of wine mm -hmm. when you when you dealcoholize it. So it's uh, very difficult to, to kind of pinpoint a good wine mm -hmm. that's non alcoholic out there at the moment. So it's struggling a little bit as far as the the overall uh, mm -hmm. non alcoholic market. Great, and, and you know, on my table, some of the trends, obviously one of the hottest trends was the uh, non-alcoholic or low ABV. Yeah. Um, but the, some of the other ones, or some of the things that were impacted in the category, you know, one was obviously price, which you touched on a little bit with that. Yep. You know, people, you've seen kind of the extremes. Uh, the extremes are where the growth is, and, and actually, when uh, Pat Doherty gave a presentation, yeah. Uh, he's from Nielsen IQ too. Yep. He presented last month at some of our uh, grocery sessions and uh, he's mentioned a trend where you see the extremes of wellness are where it's, uh, things are selling, right? If it's really good for you and if it's really indulgent. Yes. And uh, this seems to be the case here too. Uh, upper and lower tiers, right? You have the lower priced wines and spirits selling well and then the, the premium ones, right? right. Uh, so both of the extremes, but also some of the other trends they talked about, obviously sustainability is a it's big huge. thing, uh, both in packaging, but also people are paying more attention to the process up the chain. Um, younger generations are drinking less. Or, um, or moderation, right? Yeah. So they're, they're, they're factoring in, hey, I'll have a beer now and then a non-out beer and then maybe another beer, that mm -hmm. type of thing. So subsidizing it. And the other reason that we talked about at the table that a lot of them uh, uh, agreed with is also because more of them will, uh, they're getting into the marijuana with or the legal rec, legal, legalization of recreational marijuana Absolutely. is definitely impacting because they'll drink less and then they'll still get a bus at home or yeah. whatever or yeah. take a gummy before they go outside. Yeah. And that's definitely, and I see by me in New York within three blocks of my apartment, yeah. I have six stores selling it. Yeah. Only one of them's got a New York State license, but <laughs> they're all selling it. It's just everywhere in New York, it's decriminalized. Um, and you have all these recreational states, so that's definitely uh, having an impact. The other thing was, uh, the other trend that they talked about at my table was like 
flavors, like spicy flavors. And, yes. You know, mm -hmm. are you seeing that? Absolutely, before? absolutely mm -hmm. seeing. Yeah, um, the flavor is definitely a huge driving factor mm -hmm. for, especially non-alc um, mm -hmm. and alcohol in general. Uh, all these different flavors that they're coming out with, mm -hmm. more fruit-based and fruit-forward flavors for sure. And one thing I'm wondering about, and I, mean, I don't think we didn't really touch on it, uh, and I wish I brought it up, but uh, maybe you know something about this is, are there a lot of people, like for at home, are they buying these non-alcoholic cocktails just to use as mixers, where they're just gonna bring it home and add the alcohol? Yeah, that's, that's funny that you say that. We actually had a conversation about that, mm -hmm. even using the malt-based seltzers like mm -hmm. um, that already have alcohol in it, like a White Claw or a Truly, where mm -hmm. they're actually adding liquor to that, yeah. um, which I think is very funny and kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't know, it's very strange. But um, but yes, absolutely, it's definitely a trend. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the at home, you know, one thing that I definitely see in my neighborhood that we talked about at my table was there are more and more people, they may go out for a couple of drinks and then they'll pick up a case of Truly or White Claw or yep. High Noon uh, and, or beer and just bring that home and everybody will hang out there. Yeah. So and it's, it's impacting on saver. premise. But, yep. uh, but yeah, the money thing kept coming up. People, mm -hmm. You know, anybody goes out, inflation, everything is just costing so much more. Absolutely. So that they, they'll go out a little bit to have that, that time and then they'll do the rest at home. Yeah. Or they'll pregame it and then and you yeah, know, one, one, person, yeah. one way. So yeah. awesome. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And then uh, also, don't forget uh, emerging brands. Check out Nielsen IQ's Visor platform. Amazing. You want to talk about that for a second? It's a great platform. Uh, you have access to all the, the markets, retailers that you could ever want. Um, and Nielsen provides it at, at, a, at a much lower cost. It's, it's built specifically for the small to, to medium-sized brands and priced out that way. So yeah, please check it out at visor.com. And if you're a brand that's registered for one of our sessions, you get access to a custom visor uh, area that has a couple more bells and whistles uh, just for ECRM customers. Yep. So thanks again. Absolutely. All right.